Okay, Frank. Y'all set? Uh, on June 16th, uh, I miss, it's not a good one. On June 16th, 2021, Governor Baker signed into law an act extending the certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of his March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. So, we, uh, do we have any additions or omissions to the agenda? I don't think so. I'll make a motion we accept the agenda as written. That's Penny. Uh, do I have a second? I'm not sure who's on right now. Jen Foley? Yep. Second. So all in favor? We don't have Richard tonight, right? And Doug Slate? And Andy Slate. So Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great, thank you. All right. Um, 50 Surfside Road. This is continued from August 16th. And we have somebody from Green Seal Environmental. I just unmuted uh, Jack O'Leary. Seems to be the lead on this one. I can unmute anybody else if you want me to, Jack. Uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Jack O'Leary. I'm with Green Seal Environmental. Um, we're here on behalf of uh, Megan and Mark Guerrero, the, the uh, owners of the land. And this is a continued hearing on a, a notice of intent filed for 50 Surfside Road. Um, we did discuss this with you uh, last month and uh, the hearing was continued to tonight. In the meantime, the architect has prepared some revised plans with some more information and some clarifications. And we have also revised the site plan that is being presented on the screen now. Um, this actually, um, this, this site had a previous approved order conditions for a house of so, uh, somewhat similar configuration, but smaller size. And um, we, after hearing you and reading the coastal zone management comments from the last meeting, the plan has been, been revised to be something fairly close to the original approved plan. The, um, the original plan uh, that we had submitted earlier this year had some, some fill under the house and a, and a garage at grade. Th um, this plan has no fill into the house, has a, a garage um, elevated on pilings um, and uh, is very similar to the one that was approved on the previous notice of intent. We also got some feedback on the location of the plantings of the Rosa Rogosa. Mission one of those uh, on the, the uphill side of the Nomo area instead of the downhill side as was originally proposed. Uh, the plan's been modified to that. And um, that's really about it. We, we do continue to show the driveway and the, walk, and the walk, uh, walks with pervious pavers. Um, that, that is something that the, uh, the owners had understood from a previous Conservation Commission meeting would be acceptable to the commission. Uh, we, we think it makes sense. It provides a fairly low maintenance um, but sturdy surface and would still, they would still move in reaction to a large storm. And they really can't have that much of an impact because the total area of these per pervious pavers is 4% of the lot area. So we, we do request that the commission allow the pervious pavers in lieu of, of gravel. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. I'd be happy to answer any questions or explain um, anything you see. Um, um, yes. Um, Penny, can I start out with you on this one? Yes, you could. Um, okay, I do have a question right right off the bat. I like the Rose of Bagos are up at the 30-foot line, but you're showing grass. Is that mowed grass in front of that? Because that is shown on the original plan as... Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I no mow. I I don't know if we can allow him to mow in the 50 foot 
e even 20 feet of it, Frank. Okay. That's my concern right now. Otherwise, I'm, I think I'm happy with things. I like no fills. That's great. So just, I mean, we'll, we'll move this around, but refresh my memory. Where does the lawn extend to now? Yeah, that's... The, 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 lawn, the lawn extends right down to the edge of the vegetated wetland right now. The whole lot is outside of the wetland is grassed. Okay. And, and that's why we're... Um, effectively, the NOMO area would go back to a natural grass condition, and then uh, I assume some more herbaceous plants would come in and develop in there if it's not mowed. So the mowing would be limited to this, where the Rosa Rugosa border is. And, and that that's the, and that's already a, a lawn there now. But so there'll be 30, 30 feet of wildness. Exactly, you're gonna get 30 feet of, of, of <laughs> natural growth back, protected by that row of Rosa Rugosa from any, any activity or mowing. Okay, because I just, this is an interesting point. I just want to bring up, I was watching a special this weekend on ra rabbits and I don't think any of us realize, but the New England cottontail is an endangered species. So we need grasslands around. I don't know if they like it down the marsh, but stop, stop and think, how many bunnies have you seen in your yard this year? I was shocked. I had no, no idea but they are endangered. So any grass areas we can give for little critters is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Penny. Um, Jen? Um, I'm trying to remember some of my thoughts on this previously, uh, but so I, I might have other things to say, but uh, at the outset, I still would not be in favor of approving anything inside the hundred. Um, and I would like the plantings to be more significant. So I'm, I'm good for now with those comments, Frank. Thank you. Um, and I guess I, I kind of messed this up a little bit because we were going to let Amy lead off on some of these, but since I already started down this and we opened it before. Um, Brendan, do you wanna, if we're not done commenting, jump to Amy and then we can jump back. Um, if you wanna add anything to Penny or Jen. I, I will uh, hold any comment so that Amy can go. You don't have to come back to me, I'm good. Thanks, Brendan. Amy? Oh, can I ask one question? Uh, Jack, I'm seeing like that gray outline. So that's the one that was previously, that was the previously approved house is the gray outline? That is correct, yes. Okay. Sorry, Amy. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what they provided is substantially revised from the original notice of intent. So, I mean, I, I'd say that it's, it's definitely going in the right direction. Um, the DEP didn't have comments to begin with, but CZM did, and the, the comments that CZM um, made pertain to storm damage prevention and redirecting floodwaters um, for the coastal dune and flood zone that they're in. So, I mean, and then you've also got your, your buffer to your BBW, which we have a 50 foot no disturb, but it's already disturbed. I mean, it's a complicated site, right? With three existing yeah. for a house that's gonna go up on. So, I mean, is, is, we did get the structural plans in and they appear to, to not have great beams and would allow the natural flow of water uh, we would want to restrict, you know, uh, enclosures beneath that first floor elevation. Uh, pavers are not ideal in this area. We know that, although I think that Jack's comment about 4% um, is duly noted. 
you know, when the storms come through this area, it's rip right through there. So I, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I think that's probably, this is an approvable project with conditions. Do we have anybody um, in the audience to speak to this? Which would be raising your hand. Staying on Frank. Okay. Um, did we approve two lots here or originally? And is one already built on or? Yes. Is, so the house to the south of this one has been already been constructed. Uh, Karen Canfield had a hand up on this one. All right, we're going to unmute Karen. Can you? Uh, you guys hear me? We got you, Karen. Okay, great. Uh, thanks. I just wanted to jump in, Frank. Um, I live at, uh, uh, where do I live? <laughs> it's been a long day already. 39 Surfside Road, I'm calling as a neighbor. Um, I think that you're thinking of further down Surfside was another field, very similar field. There were mm -hmm. two lots down there. They've both been constructed at this point. That's this it. particular Sorry. site uh, many years ago had some condos in the rear, which is I think lot A on your plan. Oh, actually there, the, uh, you can see the outlines of the three buildings um, to the north. So there's, yep. this is getting, this is the, this lot is the only one there. The one to the north of it is actually the, the old leaching field for the condos and stuff. Right. right. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. I, I knew we had something there, but I... And, and if I can make one more comment, Mr. Sure. Chair, <laughs> is um, I, I, um, I know the conservation agent just said that this is, is in compliance, um, but she very, very um, accurately noted that, you know, this is how, you know, we get an extraordinary amount of overflow. Um, starting at about this site all the way to the south um, south side of Surfside. Uh, and in fact, there's a drainage, uh, a storm drainage, um, uh, what do they call it, cover, um, to the south of this site that routinely can't keep up. So the road's flooded. So I don't know if it's outside the scope of this, comp of this um, hearing, but it's something certainly down the road the town should be mindful of that, um, you know, if there's any further impediment, that's just going to get worse there. And if somebody could fix it while they're doing site work, that would be even better. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you're saying that's a, that's, a, that's a drain in the street, Karen? Yeah, there's a storm drain um, about, I'd say, pretty much at the corner of that property line to the south, right around there. Okay. All right. And thanks for the, I, I knew we had conditioned a couple of the projects, but I yeah. will last this. So thank you. You're welcome. It's a lot to keep track of. Um, okay. Amy, do you want to add any more to what you just offered us or Jen Foley? Are you asking me or Jen? Um, well, Jen was kind of was thinking she might have a little bit more. Um. One thing I forgot to uh, bring up earlier, I think, is the foundation for the garage. Amy, is there anything to say on that? Well, so now they've they're they're ramping up, which was which addressed the CZM comments that they're, you know, solid slab for the garage. So it's, you know, ramps up. So it, it's my understanding that structurally this will comply with the coastal uh, building requirements that for this and coastal dune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you explain the foundation for the garage? 
Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. It, it, like the house itself, it will be it will be constructed on piles, mm -hmm. and it'll be con constructed of a series of of uh, I think if they'd be four foot wide concrete slabs that would rest on the piles. So the garage would be elevated above the existing grade below, which would which would be remain unaltered below it. So it, it would allow flood water to flow around and under the garage. And as, as Amy mentioned, CZM suggested the way to deal with that is to provide a short ramp down to the existing grade uh, on uh, in front of it, which is shown on the plan. There's still a small amount of, fairly small amount of fill is needed right there to make that ramp work. Um, so in that way, it, it does meet the requirements. Um, there are no, no permanent structures armoring the coastal dune beneath the, the structure. Does that answer your question, Jen? Yeah, it does. That was really helpful detail. Thank you. Well, one of the other concerns that we had, Frank, uh, the previous plan was there were also walls. There were some retaining walls that were going to redirect or possibly redirect water and, and material. And those have also been removed. So, I mean, other than making it clear on compliance with structural structural plans, and then also your no mow and any vegetation to be added, I, I think you could probably close and um, you know condition this project. Okay. Here, I would want to make one thing clear too on the structural plans. They they for clarity, the architect shows the the house and the garage on, on the pilings in in elevation view, so you can see them. Um, not not shown graphically as there there would be there wouldn't there be no retaining walls, but there would be lattice walls and that sort of thing to make it look good. Uh, that would allow water to pass and repass under the under the house and the garage. And rocks will take it out. But so they're pro they're, pro they're proposing skirting around the house. Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for aesthetic reasons, it would allow water to pass freely. It would not be a, not nothing like a retaining walls on the plan anymore. Yeah, lattice walls are are actually frowned upon as well because even those redirect water. Although it, we have a hard time controlling that, even though we have it written in many orders of no lattice. Oh, okay, I, I didn't see it in the order for the previous uh, house on this. Um... They usually get broken, Amy. I'm not too concerned about the lattice. <laughs> I mean, the I rocks am. will take them out. Yeah. Well, the prop, what we're seeing happen now with the lattice is that before it was made of wood, most of this, if, if it's a really bad storm and some of it gets washed out, it winds up getting washed into the pond or into I the understand. marsh. Yeah. And that used to decay. Now everybody's using a composite. Really? And, and the last time we did a scout cleanup and like down on Oceanside with that marsh between 10th and 7th. Um, we found a lot of PVC and um, composite material, which we know isn't gonna, isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, that stinks. So, I mean, I understand the request for that. I'm, I'm wondering if that could at least be we talk, well, or or talk about maybe keeping it up. Um, some from the ground. I, what's the, Jack? Do you know what the difference? I should be able to tell from the plan, but from the grade to the underside of the house, how tall is that? It, it varies somewhat, but it's in the range of six feet, five or six feet in the front, maybe a little higher in the back. Sure. So. And is there, I'm assuming they're gonna put some sort of plantings or something. I would think so, yeah. We don't show them on the plan, but uh, yeah, is, they, they certainly wanna make the house look good. So right. um, any way we can get there is, is fine if you wanna condition that appropriately. Um, maybe, you know, maybe work something out in the field or. Um, I'm just wondering if, if we start to talk about a gap or, or some, I mean, some of the houses that are right on the water you know, the waves just just knock it all away. I think on this side of the road, at least for the time being, 
it's, it's probably not as severe, but it's still once it, it clogs with debris and stuff like that, it, it winds up getting, yes. getting de- pushed in. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe that was kept up a certain amount off the ground that water could flow freely and it would still wind up getting sort of concealed by, by well, shrubbery. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, we're not in a velocity zone in this site, so. Um, no, but it, I mean, that the, the experience, is, is, uh, as Canfield was saying, and, and most of the folks that live down there, um, the, the amount of overwash and it runs down Surfside and into these places is is pretty significant mm-hmm. when there's a when there's a major storm. Mm-hmm. Frank, one thing that uh, I would like to see is the uh, Rosa Ragosa line up to the. Is it on the fifty foot buffer or is it it's on the thirty? Um, it's on the thirty foot no mo zone. As so I'd of, like to see uh, that at the 50, given 50 is our no touch. But it's already grass. That's what it's hard. But we're starting a new yeah, ownership I, of the site. No, I hear you. We've been pretty uh, consistent with putting conservation markers in certain places. And in this spot, it just feels more natural to move that Rosa Ragosa up 20 feet. I guess another consideration might be Penny brought up the the fact that there's not much habitat in in this area um, for upland kind of animals And, and you do see an awful lot of rabbits but most of them aren't eastern rabbits that's the rabbit that's uh, on the extinct list. There's right. a difference between a lot of the rabbits that you see in the yard and, and the eastern rabbit. If they found an eastern rabbit in there, then the whole area would be protected. So, um, or, or it would get certain, certain protection. I'm wondering if with a couple of other sites, Jenna, Penny, Brendan, where we've been looking for more plantings and a variety of plantings, like Rosa Ragosa is certainly a good barrier, they're, they're good and thorny, and allowing stuff to just revegetate beyond that. But after a while, most times folks aren't that happy with that, the stuff starts to get taller. Um, and then they want to want to address that. I'm just wondering if, if either to Jen's point, go to the 50 or think about a, a, a more um, beneficial planting in there that would that would increase habitat. Who, who did the wetlands line, Jack? Uh, we your- um, I'm sorry, Amy, maybe you know this was this came from the original plan, which I'm looking up at right now. And it was done. It was confirmed through a uh, ORAD, but unfortunately the plan doesn't call out who, who did the delineation that I can see. Um, the original you, orders were Ross. Yeah, Ross must have hired someone to do it, I guess. Uh, but to your, your point, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that's a good idea if we we if we enhance the area in the 30 foot no, no mo area with some some vegetation that had provided some wildlife habitat values um, and dense densified that up it would provide uh, provide some habitat and, and make it a little more meaningful as a buffer um, while still preserving the the open grass area in front for the rabbits if uh, endangered or not <laughs> so um, I would really like to see the the buffer get moved closer. Otherwise, what are we? I mean, we can you can <laughs> you can vote around me on it, but like no, no, thirty no. feet is is not a lot on this site. Yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize Jim, and, and I realize you know we're we're trying to create a better situation all the way around. We've had this discussion right. in a number of places. I'm looking at the structures to the north. And I'm trying to remember what's in back of them. Um, just drawing a blank. Yeah, they um, have a they have a driveway that's right up against our property line that comes within maybe 20 feet of the actual uh, wetland line there. Yeah. So it's kind of close. Um, uh, there's a there we go right there. Perhaps that's a good spot for some enhancement because that would provide some some buffering and some stormwater enhancement from their runoff, uh, which I assume must go at some point into the wetland there. Um, well, let, let's think, think too, this is good. This is going to be a home and there's going to be a yard and back. And, and if we, if we do rid, go right to the 50 foot, it comes fairly close to the, the house. So it's, it's, it would really constrain the homeowner as far as how much yard they have. Whereas now it's, it's all grass and wide open. So um, I really think if we if we enhance the 30 foot, we're going to get the best bang for our buck here. The grass does very little for the environment, as Andy has pointed out to us on several occasions. So mm -hmm. having a 50 foot planted area with pollinators or Rosa Rugosa or things like that is far more beneficial than 20 feet of grass. Maybe you could split the difference, go to 40. <laughs> just, just saying, I mean, we've also seen, um, you know, a, like a markers or like a split rail fence or whatever, like making sure that it's observed that that's the no mow area. I can think of sites where you've done that. But I think we could probably make a motion at this point, guys. Oh, and yeah. Andy here. So maybe we should have Andy's comments. Andy, are you in? Sorry, couldn't, couldn't unmute myself. I'm here, uh, but I'm sort of just catching up, so I, I will wait on this one. Okay. Well, just real quick, we, we've, this is a continuation, and um, we're... Uh, Coming and hard. Well, they've changed the the uh, configuration of the house. Um, um, the garage is up on piers now, and um, this area was all lawn right to the wetlands line, and um, so the applicant has proposed um, a thirty foot strip of of no mow with a row of Rosa Ragosa. And um, debating right now where that you no know, disturb whether we whether we hold the fifty foot buffer or do we we have some other line that we're willing to work with here um, with possibly additional plantings is is, is what we're in the kind of the crux of and we're we've got a limited number of members so it does. Didn't hurt for you to be this for a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, and I guess I, I hear what Jen's saying. Um, you know, we want to really start to push for our 50 no disturb area. Um, well, let's go to the 40. I'm for that. Yeah, and I mean, it, it should be noted that they have existing orders to mm -hmm. build a new house on piles. So this is brand new filing because they wanted to come in more aggressive with a you know different you know walls pool bigger house that type of thing so they're getting their bigger house but it's it's, it's on piles um and there's no pool no pool so we drove home that victory um i mean 40 i think that would be a good 
I think I would be happy to make a motion for 40 with some extra Rosa Ragosa and, and plantings in there because I think it's a little weak. Okay, right. I see Amy it, nodding. And, and yeah. Hanson. Yep. I'll like I make a, a motion that we close 50 surfside uh with the addition of an enhanced buffer uh at 40 feet I'll so that in, that that enhanced buffer would be a, would be something that um they would have to submit and we'd have to approve yep i'll second it so we have a motion from jen second from penny um any other so good so all in favor, um, if I got to ask, Brendan? Yes. Andy, yes. do you, you feel up to speed? Uh, I'll, no, I'll wait on this one. Okay. And, uh, and Frank, yes. Okay. okay. Great. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Um, 28 Gilson Road. This is Morse. And Doug's in so Applicants request to continue to October 4th. October 4th. I'll make a motion to continue 28 Gilson to October 4th. For a second. I'll second that. That was Doug. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Jen. Yes. Andy. Yes. Brendan. Yes. Thank you. 21 Central Ave. Okay, so 21 Central is a continued public hearing from August 30th. And just so the applicant who the applicant's attorney has his hand up and I will Put them on in just a second, Adam, but I just wanted to say we're going to try to keep everything pretty condensed and brief since we've already heard this twice. And so we'll just give a quick update of, of what we've accomplished since our last hearing and hopefully close this. So I'm going to get Adam on. Brief. Should be good to go, Adam. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? We hear you. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, Adam Brodsky. I represent South River Marina Realty LLC. We do have our full team available and I'm happy to be brief. We had three deliverables after our last public hearing. One, uh, you asked that I meet with Ms. Walkey, Town Council and Mr. Snow to discuss measures to ensure that the boat ramp would remain public. And we discussed that at length and I'm waiting for some additional materials from Ms. Walkie to try and convince the condominium association to grant an easement but we agreed at the end of that conversation that the commission could condition the project uh, with a special condition requiring that the boat ramp remain public and that the applicant work with the commission uh, to, uh, to, to uh, craft a mutually agreeable document uh, uh, to accomplish that. Second, uh, you asked for additional information uh, with respect to erosion control. And third, you asked for additional information regarding our stormwater BMPs. And so uh, we enlisted Greg Morse from Morse Engineering, who is our civil engineer, to submit to you a letter dated September 13, 2021, in which he uh, summarizes the drainage conditions of the site and also proposes construction phase erosion control measures. And hopefully with all of that information, the commission can now close the public hearing and issue an order of conditions. So uh, we are all available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Um, I concur with what, what he just said. Okay. They're all set. Amy, do you want to make any other comments before we move through the members? Not particularly. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Richard's still not here this evening, right? And he's not going to be? Yeah, Rich is out tonight, but we've got uh, Doug and Andy on board now. That's just a sin in his hood. Um, well, I guess the next thing we can do is listen to Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in a small town in Colorado. There you go. No, actually, I wasn't. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> she sounded the hip good. and missing. It sounded, it sounded good. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, good I, I, good I'm Simba. good. I, I didn't see. Um, I was looking through our my correspondence looking for Greg's letter, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that somebody had a chance to review that and is happy with it. Yeah. Um, uh, didn't see it, it. Did that go in the earlier one, Jen? I don't know. Um, I don't know if Greg is on for this, but I, said, I, I'm. So Mr. Said Greg, had the whole, Greg of course, is available if you wish to hear from him. We submitted that letter electronically and also via hard copy. Okay. Now, I, I, I don't think it's fair to hang things up on that, but. Uh, um, so I, I, I'm actually good with this application. So, um, moving on. Okay. Um, Penny. I'm all set. Thank you. Jen. If Amy is happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Andy. Yeah, I'm all good now. Brendan. I have no additional comments or questions. Okay. Um, I, you know, I was able to meet with Amy and, and town council, uh, attorney Brodsky, and we worked through some of the, the details and I felt like the applicants addressed the concerns that we had. Um, and I'm assuming they'll figure out this ramp business with the, with the abutting uh, folks on Webster street. Um, and I, I think Doug pointed out early at, at one of the earlier meetings that this still has an awful long way to go with um, with other agencies. Yeah. Um, so it's not like it's not going to get scrutinized. But knowing that they have uh, measures in place to clean up runoff from the site um, and that we've got a, a letter so they're dealing with issues as they construct that um, uh, preventment, if you want to call it, um, sheeting. I'm in pretty good shape with this. Do we have anybody in the audience, anybody else that wanted to speak to this? Which raise hand, use a raise hand feature. You're on. Nope. Seeing none, Frank. Okay. Um, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to close and um, Amy's going to work with them to get through this. Okay, Amy. Um, yeah. Second. So we got a second from Andy. Yep. Is that right? right? Yep. Uh, all, all in favor, Doug? Yes. Jen? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, Tight. 138 Pollock Street. Yeah. Is that right? Come up to the next one. So, Amy, you want to speak to this first? Oh, sure. All right. So, yeah. So, this is also a continued public hearing from August 30th. And I believe that, I mean, we got through this addition um, up to the point where there was feelings about the mitigation that was proposed. So Morse developed an additional mitigation proposal, which looks like Greg's on the line. I'll unmute him, he can present it, and you guys can make comments. Sound good? That's good. Greg, if you're there, we go. Great, thank you. 
For the record, Gregory Morris, registered engineer, Morris Engineering, representing the property owners and Daniel Shea. Uh, this was presented at the last Conservation Commission meeting. This is a notice of intent to construct an addition at the Shea's residence, 138R Hollett Street. Um, several resource areas out here. We had those delineated by Brad Holmes. There was a bordering vegetated wetland. There was an inland bank associated with a coastal river and there was FEMA floodplain located on the site. All of the work was outside of the 100 foot buffer zone to the bordering vegetated wetland. Um, it was outside the FEMA floodplain area. However, it was located within the 200 foot riverfront area as well as it was um, some of the work was located within 100 feet of an off-site vernal pool. All of the work was proposed over existing lawn areas. We had proposed mitigation by removing portions of a gravel driveway to comply with requirements for the riverfront standards for degraded area. Um, we proposed erosion controls around the limit of work. And at the conclusion of the last meeting, I left essentially with three tasks. One of them was getting a DEP file number that had not yet been issued. That has now been issued. DEP had no comments on this project. Secondly, I identified the number of sauna tubes that would be used on the porch addition. I'm proposing eight sauna tubes that I've identified on the plan. And then lastly was additional mitigation. And what you'll see at the top of the plan here is a hatched triangle area that represents approximately 250 square feet of area. That's within the uh, riverfront area. It's also within the FEMA floodplain area, that existing lawn surface. We would remove that lawn and propose 250 square feet of plantings. Uh, we had specified 12 plantings that would be uh, harmonious with the site native species. Um, I turn it over to you, but I believe we've addressed the comments to this point. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, Doug, do you want to? Uh, I think that's, I, I think I, I like this. I think it's, you know, you know, we're never going to get perfection on these sites, I think we're, um, you know, this this is a, I think it's a good step in the right direction. I think, I, I guess I'm, I'm okay with this. I like the idea of the native species plantings down in that area. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna trust that, um, you know, it's like this geographically shaped perfect triangle that they're probably gonna plant things to make it, um, you know, cosmetically ple pleasing for the people who live there. Um, and I, and I know there's not, you know, we, we, I don't know what we have. This is a notice of intent, right? So what we have, what do we have like a three year period to make sure they grow if the plants take? What is it? Two um, or three, Amy? Two or three years to make this grow? Yeah, that okay. we check it. So it so I, next one. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, 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 Remember the comments from last time is to put something besides just lawn out there, and I think the applicants made a, a, a at least a reasonable effort to to do that. So um, I, I'm 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 good with that. Um, okay. Uh, with that, you know that, and I think that's a normal condition, isn't it, Amy? That we always have like a two or three year observation to make sure. Okay, so that's yeah. not even really a special condition. So. No. Um, yeah, no, that would be something we would put a yeah. period, I think. Yeah, so that's good. And then, and then, if I remember right, the, uh, the upper area is going to be grass, which makes sense in that area. I mean, um, so combined, I think they're doing a reasonably good job of uh, making up for the, the impervious area of the addition. So, um, so I'm good with it. Um, thanks, Tim. Um, Penny? I was not here for the original, but I understand the project. I know where it is. And um, yeah, it, it's hard 
when when a site's been so so disturbed, you know, to put mm -hmm. our restrictions in. So that's good. We do get some plantings. That's all. Thank you. Um, Jen. Yeah, I would agree with uh, a lot of Doug's comments. So I'm good. Okay, Andy. Yeah, nothing to add. Brendan. No, I have nothing to add either. Do we have anybody in the audience? Well, I'd say given that I don't know how many hundreds of ton crane train run back and forth by there yeah. all the time, <laughs> I would say that the applicant, if nothing else, is probably going to be interested in planting even more. So um, I, I think Keep it's it quiet, a little yeah. quiet. I'd, uh, I'd take a motion here. I make a motion to close. That's Penny. If we have a second. I will second that. That's Doug. All in favor? Um, Jen? Yep. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you very much. So now we're on to 39 Arrowwood. Let's see. Uh, on September 20th, 2021, at 5.30 p.m., the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Scott and Tara McGavin for work related to a pool, patio, retaining wall, fencing, and landscaping for a dwelling located at 39 Arrowwood Drive situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting is available on the agenda posted on the town website. So we I believe we have got Brad Holmes is going to present on this one. Um, Brad. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Good evening, members of the commission. Brad Holmes with ECR here on this notice of intent application for 39 Arrowwood Drive. Um, I have a, color, a somewhat of a color rendering of, of this plan, if it would be possible for me to share my screen. Um, if we could but if not, that. That, it's out of my... Um, that's okay. I, it's out of my work. wheelhouse, Brett. No problem. This works fine too. What we're proposing is a, a backyard improvement project consisting of a proposed pool, uh, extension of a patio, and replacement of a patio. Uh, the property contains a single family home with driveway, walkways, lawn and landscaping, and the property slopes off at the edge of the yard on the western boundary towards a bordering vegetated wetland system that you can see flagged in the uh, A-series wetland flags. There's a steep topography as you move from the backyard of the property towards the wetland line. Yeah. So what, what we're proposing is a pool in the backyard uh, of the property for use for the residents and some patio improvements. If you um, look at the house, there's an existing patio that's shaded that we're proposing to replace with a pervious patio. And we're proposing to extend that patio to the south. We're also proposing a pool with associated patio and retaining wall system, which will surround the, the uh, patios to the south as well, uh, to the north, just northwest of the house. We situated the pool and the patio in this location because we can't use other portions of the site because there's a water main easement is, and septic system as you move further towards the northeast uh, and moving closer towards the wetland and also to the south isn't possible. So we've designed the project so that we're staying outside the 50 foot buffer zone. You'll see that there is a black line on the plan. It says the tree line. Uh, most of the project occurs within the tree line and yard that's existing. There is a portion 
to the north of the, say, northwest of the tree line, uh, that's a vegetated buffer that is proposed for clearing so that we can uh, situate that corner of the pool and pool patio and retaining wall. Uh, so what we're looking to do is stay outside of the 50 foot buffer zone, just landward of that 50 foot buffer zone limit with erosion controls <laughs> and install the retaining wall and work towards the landward side of the site to accomplish the project. Uh, there aren't any other resource areas on site other than the bordering vegetated wetland in the 50 foot and 100 foot buffer zones. And we'll take any questions you may have. Um. I, I just have a couple of things right at the gate. Frank? Yes, please. Okay. So, well, so that this is in the Water Resource Protection District. Yep. I'll call half that. And I mean, honestly, I've I've never even driven down this street before. Oh. Um, this filing came in. You know, it's kind of like pretty, you know, it's off a of clap road near the Norwell line on the other side of Itchies. I don't know if, how many of you went by here, but anyways, um, the whole development must have been in as a limited project. In fact, I, I know it was, and it's pretty funky. Like for instance, the septic tank is on the property, but not the, not the leaching field because it doesn't fit. And the site was filled pretty substantially if you look at the grades. Mm -hmm. Like at least in some locations, there's like 12 feet of fill that was brought on to establish what, you know, you've got the house, but then it is a slope, I believe uh, letter from Ross Engineering says greater than 25% um, down to the wetland. But anyway, so it's a pretty complicated project with not a lot of detail that we've been given on the plan, at least. Like the, the retaining wall, I would think that we need more information on how you're going to build that. Um, and, I, and, and then because it's in the Water Resource Protection District, it also appears that it would require a variance from the zoning board. So I'm not so confident that zone, uh, zoning board gives out variances very often. So it, I think it's complicated. And that's just initial comments. Okay. Um, before we go to the members, Brad, do you want to make additional comments on that? Uh, sure, we can provide some more detail on the retaining wall. Uh, the Water Resource Protection District isn't something that uh, uh, I'm able to discuss tonight. We can look further into that. It's not necessarily a Conservation Commission matter because it doesn't uh, pertain to the Wetlands Protection Act and the Town of Situate Wetlands regulations. But uh, if that's something that we have to pursue as a permit, then we can look forward to that as well. Yeah, Brad, we're trying to stick to the permission from all other boards and committees first before you come to the Conservation Commission. Um, we like to try to make sure that, you know, you're gonna actually be able to build the project before we spend a lot of time because we're super busy if you haven't noticed, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, so I, we need more information. Like, th like the limit of work is not definitely not realistic. I would say, um, given the scope of the project, I, I think maybe Doug might have some really great comments uh, if he studies this plan with the grades at all, um, just because this is what he does. But I reviewed it with the building commissioner this afternoon, and it's just it seems pretty complicated. Um, Okay. Um, well, I, I still think I, I understand what you're saying about other boards, but I, I think that's a quandary that everybody gets in is where do they go first? And uh, it's certainly good for them to hear the opinion of other members so that they have some idea as they move forward what they may or may not have to contend with. So I'd like to move through the members, um, at least for initial comment. I think that would help. 
and then we'll we'll have to probably continue. Think Brady can be thinking about the continuance and how long it might take to deal with some of those things. Um, so, um, Jen Foley. Uh, yeah, it, it seems complex, um, and I would echo a lot of Amy's sentiments. Um, it's just a little bit challenging to kind of diagnose the plan without, without some of those details that help you understand, um, fill and whatnot when you don't know the, the specs of retaining walls, but I'm also interested in Doug's comments, not to uh, <laughs> pass the buck. Seems good. Well, what, Doug, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> You're on the it, spot, Doug. Yeah, I, I know. I, little, it, I was going to give you a little more time if you want me to roll through a couple more numbers. No, that's that's okay. I could I kind of throw those things out. I think we're going to probably look for to continue this anyways um so to give brad some information and go back it, it's this is definitely a challenging site to design something like this on and we're looking at how steep that driveway is coming down um already so it was a challenging lot probably in the beginning oh, um i do kind of remember something about the 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 and, and i i don't What's complicated here too is like not to get too deep into things that fall out of our jurisdiction. But when I I, I look at this plan, like um, on the proposed pool site, that there's going to be a, a a platform around there, you know, a, a decking around there, probably concrete or something. And with that retaining wall, it, it's it's basically kind of creating some sort of a bathtub there because the the street side of the retaining wall looks to me like it's going to be about six and a half feet tall. So as you're backing up to a retaining wall like there, so there's a, a consideration grading wise of what happens from there. Like, I don't know if they're proposing a fence to go around the top of it um, for safety. Cause you, there would be a hazard there. And again, that's, I, that's not necessarily conservation uh, issue but if um the, the the downhill side is a little over three feet high maybe about four feet sticking up out of the ground for the length of the house um so that's going to have to be trenched and dug with a, a wall that goes down four feet below that so it's a significant wall to be built along that perimeter so i guess um I'm looking at, uh, this isn't a coastal bank or anything like that, but the stability of the bank is a concern. And, and, and what I'm looking at, Brad, is, is, and this may be a question I bounce back to you, that with this, you know, you can kind of get the flavor of the board looking for mitigation on sites when we're working in the buffer zone and, you know, native species and doing, you know, plantings that are, are beneficial to the resource areas um, connected that way. And I think it's, according to this, it's pretty much woods all the way back to the wetlands from the build out. So I, I guess the consideration is to think about what could you plant in there on a slope that, that, that is that steep that is going to um, take and, and, and hold up and, and be effective. Um, or do you want to look at some other place on the site to offer some kind of mitigation? It, it, it's, it's definitely a challenging build out. I, I think um, I, I just look at that and that idea of the pool there, you gotta, you, you step off one side and you fall down into the woods. And if you, in the front of the house, you're, I said, you got about a six foot drop uh -huh. down to the pool area. It just, um, And uh, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, I, I think I would be looking at like some, there, you probably have to get some structural design on that wall because the, the, the total length of that wall is going to be 
pretty high. And so I, I you know, things like, um, are we looking at, at weep holes? Do we have any kind of hydraulic issues? Cause you're going to be down in the groundwater on the uphill side. I, I, so those kind of things engineering wise, I don't have the answers to obviously, but I think that's what the kind of detail when we're talking about adding detail that, that at least I would want to look at. We can get more detail and get you some more spec specifications on that. And um, there's a limit of lawn there that's just inside the, the 50 foot buffer zone. You see the, the tree line. So there, there are some areas yeah. that we can offer some, some plantings and some, some um, additional mitigation and mid, uh, you know, some stability along that slope. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's, that's really steep lawn. Do they actually mow that? It's uh, if I have a picture, I, I don't know how to, I can try to share my screen, but it gives you an idea of the backyard. It's, it's a, it's the tree line and the, and the lawn. Is it, you know, great turf on the slope? No, but it is mowed. It is mowed. Okay. There's a, yeah, if you well, have your notice of intent in the project narrative, there's a picture of the backyard of the house and it shoots across the, from the south to the north and you can kind of get a feel for the backyard area. Okay. Gotcha. Um, all right. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah. The, so finding a, a, an area to mitigate that, that seems to be a bit of a challenge too, but I see the areas you're talking about. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, it's a tough, kind of a tough design there, but um, all right, that's it. Okay, thank you. List. Oh, we'll roll around. Uh, Penny, did you comment on this show? No, I haven't. Are you ready for me? Well, okay. trying to follow some, go ahead. Yeah, this whole development is a challenging development. I don't remember when it was built, but I'm, Still an odd that it ever got built. Every single lot is weird. It's a very weird lot. They they have the acreage, but the lots are very narrow because, as you see, you have that drop off there. I'm not crazy about cutting any trees down. Um, this, like I said, the whole development when when it was done, I wasn't on the board at the time. I do not believe Frank might know when it was done, but um, every single house is a challenge because the lots are so weird. And I just don't know if this is such a good idea to put a pool in. I would like to hear all the stuff that Doug asked for to come back. And um, because it, just drops right off in the back. And that's the whole whole street. I mean, I'm not just talking this lot. Okay, that's enough for me tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, Jen? Uh, you already got me. Oh, sorry. Andy? I uh, don't have too much beyond what's been said to add. I, I mean, these, these projects that go right up to the 50, I definitely would like you know to hear i'm thinking about how to make sure that if it were to go in that, you know it's not going to then require some more you know movement in closer to the 50 or into the 50 because it feels like that's how these projects go so i would i don't know i have a, a clear statement on that but i definitely am looking at that and and were it to go forward want to have some real confidence that, that there's not going to be further intrusion it's not a good spot um, Brendan? Yeah, um, pretty much everything that I'm thinking has already been said, so uh, I, I'm not going to, you know, repeat it. I, I just kind of leave it, I guess, at that every, you know. Right down the street from you, Brendan, you should take a ride down there. <laughs> I, I've, I've been there. And actually see it. I will go see it. It's interesting. <laughs> okay. Do we have anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this? No. 
but I think, Frank, had, I, I think that uh, the point. I think I see, I see Tara McGavin has her hand up. Okay, you know? just really quick, I'll want to insert that the zoning board approval or variance on this project is required because of the 25% slope, over 25% slope that exists, uh, yeah. which we have that certified from the previous orders. So, uh, so you're saying in addition, in addition to our approval, it's gonna need, you feel it needs to go before the ZBA? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, and you would- Because it's in the Water Resource Protection District and there's <laughs> greater than 25% slope. And that okay. makes it require a variance um, okay. for, for work on this lot because of that fact. Yeah. Okay. So here, let me unmute. Yeah, Tara. could you un unmute Tara, please? She is the owner, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Hi, can you guys hear me? We can, Tara, thanks. Uh, sorry if my baby starts crying, I'm just trying to feed him. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> just a couple quick questions, because I just want to make sure that we understand what we need to do between now and um, next time coming forward. So my first question is, is if we were to change um, the location of the pool, the reason that we didn't want to initially is because if it's directly behind the house, we lose all of the lawn for like my two little kids and our dog. Um, and it also would be shaded all the time. But if we were to move the location of the pool to be directly behind the house versus to where it is on this plan, does that have any changes or anything? Or no? I, I, I think grading wise, um, if I can answer that, I think grading wise, that certainly makes it an easier uh, build out and the, the, the construction of that much retaining wall would be, looks to me like we cut in by more than half. So it, it does seem like um, something like that would probably be a good idea. Okay. And then the other questions I have is in terms of um, like to keep it where it is, because that's obviously ideal um, given the reasons I just stated. Um, I think we've had some challenges with like what we need to know for this. Sorry, Tegan, please be quiet. Uh, sorry. Um, with, um, in terms of what you need to know around the retaining walls, like um, do we need to go to a mason and get them to draw plans and, and like give an estimate on like fill and things like that? I, I just don't, I don't really know where to go from here in terms of how much more information you need there. I think if you're engineer, would probably be the person to Give to work to design that. You might he might work in collaboration with either Mason or however you're going to build the retaining walls. But um, a lot of times it goes on from Doug. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're going to go from like a, a an engineer drawing your plan to a, a structural engineer um, yeah. that's going to approve a retaining wall of that height. So. <clears throat> You are going to need, in, in addition to approval by the commission, and Amy feels that it's CBA as well, um, possibly a discussion with the, um, the building inspector is also the zoning board agent, and, um, and he'd be the one to approve or, or, or disapprove the retaining walls um, structurally, so it might not be a bad idea for somebody to, to have that discussion uh, with the building inspector as well. Um, Got you a question. Does that help? Uh, yeah, it does. We'll talk to, um, but we've been working with Ross Engineering on this, so mm -hmm. um, we can talk with them. And then Brad, I don't know, I know you don't have the ability for Brad to share a screen, but Brad, do, do we have any of that information on the um, more detailed, like color-coded copy? Not the specs on the retaining wall that uh, the commission's asking for. Okay. I'll coordinate with you and Ross Engineering and we'll look at the, the layout and go over the retaining wall and, and touch base with the building department regarding the, the notice of the Water Resource Protection District. And we can regroup and come back to the commission. I, I th think that you know this is definitely a doable project in some means with some variations. It's all, uh, you know, that's outside the 50 foot buffer zone. And there's a usable yard here that we can 
work with. So I think we can uh, listen to what the commission said and take some of the uh, design changes and come back to the commission with some more detail and possibly a different layout or some uh, variations. Thank you, everyone. For uh, so, Scott and Tara, I just, I, you should understand as well. I mean, Arrowwood, it's a beautiful area, but it was also a really complicated yeah. uh, subdivision with extensions to roads and lots of kind of odd easements and um, property odd lines odds. and whatnot to, to fit all this in. So, okay. I think, um, I think spending a little bit of time and, and like was noted with Phil. A lot of fill was was needed to to develop some of this, so um, it's a you, you've got a little bit more of a complicated site than than some of the projects that come before us. And uh, as Brad mentioned, you've you've got it, some area there, and I think you just need to kind of work that through with maybe a combination of Ross and your, your pool company or retaining walls and and all that sort of stuff. And I know there, there are other um, residents in the area. There are a couple other ones that do have pools. Um, so hopefully if we make some of these adjustments and get you further details the second time around, it hopefully, like Brad said, will be doable. Yeah, well, it, it, it all depends on the lot. They all, they all vary. Um, in, but in this particular case, we have that big drop off in back of your house. Um, put it, putting in a pool is adds another dimension and the, the water protection district for, for Cohasset, you know, the proximity to their, their water resources. Um, might look at, you want to discuss that with uh, Mr. Maravito as well. Right down the hill. One, one of the things that I would like to mention though, is if, if you think about the overall structural integrity of the house itself, adding the retaining wall to the back, would actually sure up some of the foundation, right? Because there is some sag in the foundation and you can see some erosion on the back where the fill probably washed away some. So that would add some sort of stability. Okay, that was Scott. Who right? was this? Yeah. Okay, so I, I think those are all things that you should discuss with, with, um, with Ross Engineering um, okay. and see if you can pull that together um, would, would be a good way to go. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how much time we need um, before we hear back from you folks. I mean, this seems like it's going to take a little time. I'm going to say December 6th, Frank. Let's put them on the first meeting in December or, or the second meeting in December. What are you thinking, Brad? Uh, I wasn't thinking December. I was thinking, you know, uh, four weeks that would give us enough time to uh, get some of this done and coordinate with the uh, everybody and get a revised plan in. And if for some reason we need an extension, we'll request an extension prior to that. If, if you have something in four weeks, great, but whatever's close to that. What do you, where are we at? I mean, I, I think if you're gonna move forward and it's still gonna have more questions rather than push the thing way out till December and then find out there's other issues, I think it would be, better to try to do it a little sooner. Either, who's got the calendar to? I've got a calendar, but I don't know. Um, the 11th is a holiday. So the 25th of October on November 1st or 15th, maybe. No, 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 no. Okay, so the options are October 18th, or November 15th. And we actually, the 18th is, is full with the, with the NOI. We've got like 10 backlog of like 10 NOIs. But so, I mean, I just, I, I really don't see these questions being answered by then. So if you wanna make a motion, do it for the 18th. Of November? October. October, okay. Or it's November 15. Yeah, October 18 or November 15. All right, which one, Frank? One, well, Brad, I, it seems like the 18th would be pretty ambitious. Um, do, do you think that you'd have enough information by then to come you're back to something? 
I, I believe yes. And if, and if for some reason we can't, I'll, I'll request a continuance from, from the commission, but uh, I think we can, I think we have enough information from the commission. I think there's uh, an opportunity for us to make some changes and come back and uh, make it work for everyone. Okay. I'll make a motion then to continue to October 18th. I have a second on that. Second from Jen. Jen. All in favor, uh, Doug? Yes. Uh, Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank? Yes. Okay. Great. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Uh, 40 Candlewood um, on September 20th, 2021, by 30 p.m., the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town and Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Charles Dongara for work related to a septic repair for a dwelling located at 40 Tanglewood Drive, situate. About as other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting is available on the agenda posted on the town website. And we have... Uh, Who's the applicant? We've we've got Grady Consulting. Scott Fernera is on the line. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Oh wow! Uh, for the record, Scott Fernera with Grady Consulting here on behalf of the applicant, Charles Dongara. Uh, we're submitting a notice of intent here for a septic system repair. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenging site. Um, the property is encumbered about fifty percent with a boarding vegetated wetland to the rear of the property. Um, to the left side of the house there, which I think is to the north, there's a drainage easement. Um, in the front of the house, there are various underground utilities that we had to navigate around. So we're proposing to, um, to install a new system, essentially in the same location as the existing system. Yeah. So the existing system is, is your old conventional pipe and stone system. Um, it is about 14 and a half feet away from the BBW. We're proposing an alternative system um, about 20 feet away from the BBW. There's erosion control in the form of a silt sack uh, around essentially the tree line to the rear. So this, this system compared to the existing system will allow a much greater separation between the groundwater and the bottom of the system, which we believe is a substantial improvement to the public health. I'll open it up to any questions at this time. Okay. Um, wow. Here, Amy, I can talk it, really quick. Sure. So uh, this is an upgrade, big improvement. Um, I mean, I don't think it's necessary for this septic upgrade to confirm that the resource areas are accurate, although I don't have a reason to believe that they're not accurate necessarily. Um, <coughs> They appear to be accurate based on, on um, what I know about the site. And Board of Health is um, ready to approve this site. And the EP had no comments. Okay. Um, Andy? I'm okay. okay. Brendan? Yeah, I have, I'm okay. Um, Jen? I think I'm good. Penny? It's just too bad you couldn't put the leaching field under the driveway. But I guess as long as it's an improvement, that's good. Thank you. Doug? Yeah, I think I'm good with it. You, this is, uh, I just pulled up my copy so I could see the other. So this is a a, 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 a pressure dose uh, system, correct? And it at it, it, it a shallow, fairly shallow grade. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, so, a it's a it's an approved alternative system, the Geomat system. Yep. Yeah, it's I'm not completely familiar with that, but that that the, that it there, it, it's a good system. So the the, the 
the benefit, one of the benefits to these things is they can kind of be placed along the contours. You don't have to do the kind of big excavation uh -huh. uh, that you do. So, you know, there's minimal grading around this system uh, with the groundwater and everything like that. Um, my guess is you could correct me on this, but you'd probably have to uh, pick that up a little bit and actually do more um, construction around it as far as grading goes and get even closer to the wetlands. So I think, especially in sensitive areas like this, I think these are good systems uh, to try to get in. Uh, and working properly, they really have minimal, you know, impact. They just, you know, kind of, does it sit in the topsoil? Is it that? Uh, there is some remove and replace for this. It's sitting a, over an existing There is system. some remove and replace, but there's, there, 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 you put topsoil in. Uh, above the system? Oh, I get you. So Maybe you could just, just elaborate on, a little bit yeah, on what so, the process is. So you're removing. Is. Sure, I'll, I'll I'll elaborate on that a little bit. So, um, like I said, I'll be in the same location as the existing system. So that existing system will have to be removed. All contaminated soil will be removed. That, okay, and there will that, be there some, you go. some sand installed underneath the system, and then right. it is a, it is a shallow profile system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. I. I just that clarification. I, I was thought you'd be removing the old one. So, yep. um, so no, I'm good. I, I think they're it, they're they're like I said, they're good systems to be putting in these sensitive areas like this. So that's a good choice. Doesn't look like Jen Foley was on the board when this field went in. Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have I'm, things I'm, to say. I'm surprised that this is so. So close to the wetlands line. Okay, anybody else? Andy, Brandon. I take a motion. They, okay. I've asked them all. They, all right. Anybody, any butters or anybody in the audience? Hang on, Frank. Okay. Okay, I make a motion to close 40 Candlewood. Okay, Penny, second? I'll second Penny. that. That was Doug. All in favor, Jen? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hold on. Can we make a motion to issue that too, please? I'll take that motion from somebody. I make a motion we issue on 40 Candlewood. And a second? I'll second that as well. All in favor, Jen? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Thanks. Great. Good move. Um, September 20th. 5.30 p.m. the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Stephen McLaughlin for work related to septic repair for dwelling at 234 Central Ave. Situated, but there's another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting is available on the agenda. So, thank you once again, this Scott Bernard from, from Grady Consulting. Thank you, Scott. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant, Steve McLaughlin, who I, I believe is also on the call, if there are any questions later on. Um, this is another septic repair. Um, this is located in Hummer Rock. There's actually a bit less of, uh, of an opportunity to, to put this in a different location. Uh, we actually did the design of the house next door at 232. So this will be a, a similar system. Um, we're proposing a, uh, a hoot system here for additional treatment, um, which will then go into a pipe and stone system, which will be under the driveway. So the driveway will have to be removed uh, and replaced after construction. There's a pr proposed silt fence, which will serve as a limit of work. 
which will go along either side of the property and then uh, tie back into the house. Okay. Uh, Amy, you wanna? Yes. So Central Ave, Hammer Rock, Barrier Beach, Coastal Dune, land subject to, co land subject to coastal storm flowage, improvement, uh, good system, Board of Health is ready to approve it. DEP had no comments. I think we're gonna be good to go on this, I hope. All right. Um, Brendan? Nope. I have no questions. Okay. Uh, Doug? Oh, looks good. It's another, it's, it's pre-treated. Uh, with the treatment system in there. So it's, I think that's, um, I think that's great. So I'm good. Penny? Okay. You're good with that? Yes, I am, sir. Thank you. Jen? Yep. Um, Andy? All good. Brendan? I'm still good. Okay. Did we ask any, anybody in the audience? No. Sorry. Oh, I want to make sure after you heard everybody. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate. <laughs> Sometimes I change my mind. Well, I can tell you're contemplating this one. Um, okay. And we don't have anybody holding up the hand. Make a motion to close. Yeah. And issue. And, and issue. issue. All yes, right. ma'am. Thank you. So now we can do one vote. So I got Penny with a motion to close an issue. I'm looking for a second. I'll second that, Brendan. That's thank you, Brendan. Um, all in favor, Doug? Yes. Jen? Yep. Andy? Yes. Hey, thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. Scott. On September 20th, 2021, 5 30 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Suzanne Murray for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaws for activities related to septic repair at property known as 14 Lane Court, Situate Mass, about as another interest parties are invited to attend, information to access the meetings available on the agenda posted on the website. We've got Greg on the line for this one. Greg, oh. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Great. Uh, for the record, Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering, representing the property owner, Suzanne Murray. This is an RDA for a septic system repair at 14 Elaine Court. Um, the property line on this plan is the black bold line. The property is about half an acre in size, it has an existing four bedroom single family home on it. The wetlands are the blue line at the top of the page here. Those were delineated by John Zimmer in July of this year and extending off that. In red is the 50 foot buffer zone and in green is the 100 foot buffer zone. The existing septic system at this property failed a Title V inspection. So this is a proposed replacement. Um, this is a treatment type system. This is a hoot treatment tank with a 1500 gallon pump chamber, and then a pressure dosed uh, drip dispersal system. You'll see that the system is 60 feet away at its closest point to the wetland resource area. It's in an area that's existing lawn. There's no vegetation uh, being removed uh, or proposed to be removed. This would be restored with lawn when the job is done. There's erosion controls around the limit of work, at the down gradient edge of the leaching field. Um, this meets all of the requirements of the presumption regarding Title V, where all of the work is outside the 50-foot buffer. This is not new construction, and this is repair of a failed system uh, to be issued a negative determination. Board of Health has approved this septic system design, and I'd turn it over to you. Thank you, Greg. Um, Amy? Um, yeah, so... I mean, I think that this would be a, you know, failed system be required to approve this. Um, appears to meet the requirements of a negative finding um, from what Greg had cited from the Wetlands Protection Act. One thing though, we will be noting that, that 
resource areas are not confirmed as accurate yeah. for the purposes of this filing. So if something else were to come in front of the board that would require further scrutiny, we have the right to, um, you know, take a look at the line. That's all. Yep. Sure. All right. Um, Doug? I am good. So that's another one of those systems that I just learning about. It's a real hoot. Ha <laughs> ha. A hooty hoot. <laughs> I'm good. What's the, what's the other one that's similar to the hoot system? There's two. Um, the fast system or the, the jet system? Okay. Yeah, I'm used to, I, I, they're, they're like, they, they treat it similar to that, Greg. I'm more they are, they all those. essentially have the same approvals through the DEP. Um, they're all aerobic treatment systems, essentially a yeah. miniature wastewater treatment plant instead of a traditional septic tank. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so Doug, you're all set? Yes, sir. Penny? I'm all set, thank you. Jen? Yep. Andy? All set. Brendan? All set. Neighbors? The septic systems never draw much of a crowd. Uh, they're kind of boring, Frank. But you need them. Okay. Um, Make a motion for negative three. Amy, do we want to... Um, oh, yeah, this is an IDA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Negative three. Uh, Which so is that's a Penny. good thing. Negative is good in this case. Yeah. Yep. So we have Penny, the motion for a negative three. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second. Andy. Oh, Andy beat me to it. All in favor? Uh, so that was Penny and Andy, right? Yep. So all in favor, Doug? Yes. Jen? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay. Um, did we, um, did we, I must have skipped over uh, the Satua You cabinet. did, Satua. That is continuing. Do I continue it again? Well, we so haven't gonna... continued it yet. Right, we, we need to make a motion to continue it, and I can't remember what Jen and I talked about, about what date it was going to continue to. I think, Jen, do you remember? You can tell Frank. We're in different rooms, so that's <laughs> I think either November 15th or October 18th. Um, November 15th. November 15th. November. Motion to continue 39 Jericho to November 15th. No second. I'll second that. Doug. That was Doug. Uh, all in favor, Jen? Yep. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank? Yes. Okay, so now we're at 127 Captain Pierce. Yep. Right? Another, no, yeah, septic. On, se on uh, September 20th, 2021. Um, I uh, Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Mark Quigley for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Central Wetland Bylaws for activities related to a septic repair on property known as 127 Captain Pierce Road situate. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information access the meeting is will be available on the agenda posted on the town website. So good evening. Uh, Greg Morse representing the applicant. This Great. is a septic system repair project located at 127 Captain Pierce Road. The property itself is a little over two acres in size, developed with an existing four bedroom home. Uh, you can see the home on the left hand side of the page here. On the right hand side, you'll see in blue the limits of a bordering vegetated wetland that exists at the site. And then further to the right, 
in blue, uh, the limits of an inland bank associated with a perennial unnamed river. Um, extending off of those in red are the 50 foot buffer zone and in green, the 100 foot buffer zone. You also see demarcation of the 100 and 200 foot riverfront areas on the site. The existing septic system here um, is located at the bottom of the page, just outside of the viewport that you see. Um, wow. There we go. So the existing septic tank is located right up next to the existing house. And then there's a long pipe that goes from the house all the way down to the leaching field, which is down at the, the bottom of the page along Captain Pierce Road. We're going to reuse the existing septic tank. It was found in good condition, so that will remain. That is just outside the 50 foot buffer zone, but the pipe from the septic tank to the new leaching field, which will be predominantly in the same location along Captain Pierce Road, um, cuts through the 50 foot uh, and 100 foot buffer zone area. The leaching field will be outside of the 100 foot buffer, but the four inch PVC pipe between the septic tank and the leaching field will go through the buffer zone. It's existing lawn area. Uh, it would go back as lawn area when the project is done. This is not an increase in flow. It's a repair for an existing system um, and erosion controls will be implemented as necessary. I turn it over to you. Uh, Amy. Um, I, I believe that this meets the requirements of a negative three. Um, yes, we like to see these failed systems get repaired. And then just of note, also the same notation about not confirming the accuracy of this wetland delineation under this repair. Okay. Um, so let's see, who wants to be called on first? Penny. No, I'm all set. Thank you. Um, Jen. So fun to call on Penny when she doesn't have anything to say. I know. <laughs> um, Sorry. I love Penny to say later. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is good. I don't have anything to say either. <laughs> That's what happened when we let Amy go first. It kind of takes all the. I uh, love it. That's okay. Uh, we get the info. Andy, I'm all set. Brendan, I am all set. Any neighbors or anybody in the audience? What, what about me? Oh, Doug. God, I have some all kinds of things I want to know. Oh, what do you have to say? <laughs> Now, actually, Greg, just one little bit of clarification. Most of the, the, the septic line is existing and to remain. You're just reusing that. So you're just talking about that little section that cuts over to the new location. Yes. It's so yeah, the existing septic tank stays mm -hmm. in place and there's a four inch PVC line that runs down to the existing system that remains in place. However, we're tapping into that line right. um, to tie into the new leaching field. <clears throat> and it's all gravity. It is. It's all gravity. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm going to run downhill. Yeah. Oh, and I noticed there's a water and a gas line that's even closer to the wetlands already there. So, yeah. No, that was that was just one piece of clarification I wanted. So that's fine. I'm good. Um, Frank. Anybody any, in the audience? I think we already asked that question when Doug. Oh, when mm -hmm. Doug piped in. All right. All right. I make a motion for a negative three. <laughs> I'm better now. Yeah. We're all you. better. Okay. Negative <laughs> three, please. Second that motion. That was from Jen. All in favor, Doug? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you very much. Um, Going to do some minutes. Is that what you want to do, Penny? Yes, I'd like to get to the mittens. I want to get. We we, we got lots of administrative things. Okay. Um, I make a motion. We approve the minutes from seven nineteen and eight thirty, as written. And uh, that's Penny. How about a second? I'll I second read them. Um, somebody I take think... my word. They're good. Jen does great. 
I couldn't I'll, hear I'll, whoever seconded. I'll second, I'll second the minutes and the comment about Jen doing great. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so you got Doug with a second. All in favor? Jen? Yep. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to run right to the um, extension, Frank, 12 Gilson Road. Do we do those for two or three years? I can't remember. Do we have to discuss any of these certificates of compliance? Well, I thought Amy could come back to that, and I'd shut up. Okay. So we're going to go to C. Yeah. Um, Is that a promise? No, it isn't, but I'll be quiet for at least a minute. Okay. Um, the extension, it, I'm not sure. Do we want to do one, two, or three years? What is this for? Um, Gilson Road, 12 Gilson. I don't know where Amy is. Amy. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. What's your extension for? I, I think it's for an addition. Okay. It's an addition, Frank. They just haven't gotten to it yet. Don't hold me to it, though. Yeah. All right. how, I kind of how remember this. Was, wasn't this set back in the woods a little bit, Penny? Gilson? Yeah. That's right at the start of Gilson. I don't think so. Well, number 12. Okay. I, I'm fine with an extension. Yeah, but for how, how long? Do we did, they request a, did they request a number? Give them two. There you yep. go. Okay, Sounds I make a motion for a two-year extension for 12 Gilson Road. Somebody second it, please. I will second that, Brendan. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Brendan. All in favor, Doug? Yes. Jen? Yep. Andy? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay. We can so go back. Penny, Penny, are we moving this along fast enough for the... Well, the, we got some stuff that we're going to have to discuss soon, so. All right. I know yeah, we're been... picking up momentum. We don't need to discuss everything, but just really quick at, pertaining to extensions. Yeah. No. Not oh. a project that's been kicking around for a long time. Like, sometimes I think you might want to rethink ones that were, you know, issued yeah. in the, like 2000s, like, or, you know what I mean? Like, but on this one, it's, a, it's 68, 26, 64. So this would be its first extension. Yeah. So, and, and, and just so you know, um, the office sent out a slew of your orders are going to expire letters. And so this was a request in response to that. So I don't really have anything under enforcement on here. So much. It's they're all C of C's, and I just wanted to give you the gist of the number of C of C's that we're getting, because with an active real estate market, you know the title searches are popping up a lot of C of C's that are out there, outstanding. I mean, well, that's good for us getting them. Three done. new, three Driftway was a new build. You probably remember that one with the bank stabilization. Um, Prospect was a new build. Um, 100 Cole Parkway was the marina for the town. Yep. Um, 67 Seaside is, um, I, I don't remember exactly what the project was. I think it's an addition. Anyways, I think, and I know that one, but it, that, you're good on that one. Uh, Rebecca is out on Cedar Point. That's an oldie. So that's an old one, 68841. Uh -huh. So we, when it's that old, we just issue them because what else are you going to do? You know what I mean? And we've got 65 Surfside. With the number that's on here is not that old, but it's pretty old. It was old enough so that the project was actually a septic system. Yeah. And now area has sewer right so of note of, of that address also popped up a 68903 which 
which may get issued too, although we don't have a request to issue that, but we did notice that that's outstanding. And I noticed that DePisa is on the line. So if it's when you want to say something about that, we should know about, you can speak up now, but um, yeah, so we're busy issuing CFCs to the extent that we can. There's another one that's not on here, which is we're getting a lot of calls on another one on Rebecca. And usually what happens is the engineers, I mean, they write a letter, not usually they write a letter, they always write a letter. So they're always, you know, the, the engineer who designs a project always certifies that it was built in compliance with the design that was provided. Well, so occasionally though, you get the engineer will call out items that actually are there that were not part of the permit. So on 24 Rebecca, for instance, it was a raised rebuild was, was were the orders back in 2005. But the engineer has now noted though, that there's, you know, a deck, which was not ever part of the deal. <laughs> granite slab, paver, driveway. So, I mean, I don't even know what to do with this. Honestly, like we were- so Amy, to Amy in, like, that case, in that case, do they have to refile? I mean- Well, if that's the question. After the fact, yeah. Right, so I mean, I guess we, we give them a C of C that says with the exception that you need to, file, which I mean, so when these are property sales, I, I mean, I don't know, it, it complicates things. You know? I wouldn't give a C, it's an attorney C. thing, you know. I'd say you have to comply and they're not com in compliance, they're, they're over. Mm -hmm. So they need to reissue. I, I mean, yeah, re, re cement. Come into compliance, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't, we, I don't know. We could make them take it all out if they want. They have no right, right to have it. Right. But Especially I mean, in that area, Amy. No, I don't yeah. think you should let it go. Okay, well, the chairman and I can talk in more yeah. detail about what we're gonna do. But okay. I mean, we do like to try to move things along, you know, and we don't wanna mess things up, but it, I mean, I obviously it needs to be noted at time of property sale that there could be some existing liability because these orders go with the ownership of the property. You know what I mean? So they stick with the, the sales, the non-compliance items become the new owner's problem or- Yeah, but, because what you're mentioning to me, a big deal is a slab. What the heck is a slab doing out there? You know, these things, I don't think they're minor little bushes or. No, it's not a minor. Another foot or two of property. It's right. Big. Okay. So I just wanted to get some thoughts from you on, on that. And then otherwise, I mean, we don't vote on those. So those are no. just, it's just paper. It's leaving the office and going to the registry of deeds. That's, we produce a lot of paper. Yeah. Uh, okay. On to item D, reorganization of the commission. Frank? Okay, so annually we need to meet and discuss members and their positions in the, in the commission. And um, there's uh, not only the chairman, vice chairman, secretary, we have a few committees, um, C Penny, uh, CPC, uh, Coastal Advisory, um, I think there's a beach uh, liaison. I'm trying to remember if there's anybody else, um, Amy. Waterways, do we say that? Wa waterways, no, I didn't. <laughs> so I, I can see that must be why Penny's been chomping at the bit to get at this. Oh, um, the next one. Oh, well, sorry, you're gonna to have to wait a few minutes. I will. Um, bananas are probably gonna rot by the time we get to that, but. Yeah, I know, I know. Stick <laughs> how we do. So um, I guess the question is, how do we? Well, I'll first and foremost, I'll make a motion for the chair, Frank Snow. Somebody would please second and, it. And I'm also happy to, at this point, you know, we should, make sure we consider this and make sure people are happy with 
with where we are and if we want to make some changes, you know, time goes by. And uh, I think all of us are, are, are willing to, to make some different changes if anybody would like to do something different. I'm, I'm not opposed to that, that's for sure. Well, I heard that, that did, Frank, did you talk to Richard? I did. Okay, I, he's, on, you know, he couldn't make the meeting tonight at the last minute. But I think that that's next. Maybe some discussion about vice chair. Yeah. Okay. I was supposed to catch up with him and I just never got a chance to get down there. Um, well, I talked to him so I can be the big mouth. Oh, really? <laughs> Somebody like to second the chair, please. I would second that. Okay. Um, do I have to do this myself? Take a vote. Yeah. Hurry up. <laughs> All right, Penny. I, and I appreciate it. As long as everybody's comfortable with that. I, as I, long as you're doing a good job, Frank, don't worry. We'll let I'll you do, know when you're done. Do my, really? Yes. I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. You're um, all right. All in favor. Um, Doug? Yes, and add the words for life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as long as we're, we're here. If life you go, I what? go. Life of what? Uh, yeah. Life in the fast lane. Jen? Jen, go. Oh. Who seconded that, by the way? I, I did. Oh, so Andy? Yes, happily. Thank you. Brendan? Yes. Thank you. You Doug? can vote for yourself, Frank. It's a lot. I, I, I won't do that. Doug? Okay. <laughs> All right. So your, your chair, and I make a motion, Richard thinks it's time that we turn over the vice chair. He's here, it helped, but he thinks Jen Foley would make a wonderful to get her feet wet as vice chair. Is that a joke because we're, we talk about the wetlands? No, it's, it's <laughs> the truth. He, he spoke to me about it, that he thought he would like to see you take on a little more of that responsibility. That's very nice of him. Would somebody like to second my motion? Oh, does Jen have to? No, we just no, we just don't do that. We just push them. <laughs> just push dump it on her. Along. <laughs> do you like it or not? <laughs> we don't argue against Penny. I guess oh, we can argue. Um, Listen, kind of. Well, I'm I'm waiting for a motion. You Wait, have the motion. Motion. Okay, second. I need a second. I'll second. That was Doug. Thank yeah. you. So all in favor. Jen, do you want to vote on it? You can no, vote that feels wrong. It, it's allowed. Andy? I would not vote for myself. Okay, Andy. If you were president, yeah. you would. Brendan. Yes. Frank, yes. Wow. There you go. Okay. You're moving up the ladder. Congratulations, Jen. <laughs> My brother is going to be yeah. so proud. I think I it, do it, do it doubles your pay, doesn't it? Yeah, it does That's what I heard. You get an official badge and everything. Oh, wow. Really? You are lucky. Wow. Look at that. How come the vice chair gets a badge? I'll make oh. you a badge, Frank. Okay. We'll get you a little star, Frank, for you. It's all, all right. pretend. Thank you, Penny. So, okay. Secretary, Penny, are you going to um? Yeah, I'm just going to continue unless somebody else wants it. Does anybody want to change that up or make a motion for Penny? Make a motion. I'll make, make a motion, motion for. Go ahead, Brendan. Brendan. Penny to be secretary. Is that what I'd say? That sounds good to me. We have a oh. second on that? Pushy, pushy me. I'll certainly second that. That was Doug? <laughs> yeah. He's okay. <laughs> All in favor. Penny, you want to vote for yourself? Oh, for myself. Yeah, why not? Why not? Okay, Jen. Yep. <laughs> and Andy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I, yes, for Frank. Okay. Um, waterways. Um, Andy, do you want to stay there? Andy, speak up. <laughs> I, sure. Unless if someone's, e if someone's eager for it, they they're welcome to it, but I'll happily stay. So, so the other one, I'm just before we move on with that, I have been the liaison to um, 
to uh, what will they call it, Chet? Um, coastal advisory. Uh, co coastal advisory. And quite honestly, I'd like to pass that on to somebody. Um, so if anybody's got any thoughts on that one, um, it's it's attending an occasional meeting with with the coastal advisory. Have they they've had a, a I don't know if you call the person an agent or whatever, but I think they're without one right now. Amy, if I'm correct, yeah, no, it's it's unmanned. So it's I'm not, I'm not unfilled. quite sure how often they're meeting. It's very interesting. Um, Richard had done it for a while, and then um, he stepped aside from that, and uh, and really have actually learned quite a bit. And it is a challenge for the town of Situate and the commission does kind of work with that as, as most of the things that are, are discussed are in our jurisdiction. So it's. Um, and from what I can tell that the meetings may be in person, but they're not very frequent. I, I don't know, maybe is if when they bring somebody into the position, they'll, um, maybe once a month i'm not sure yeah i think they've been trying to take a little bit of an educational role and and you know sort of awareness and, and education they've been trying to find some speakers and then you know on occasion um things like some of the dunes or beach nourishment projects whatnot are um are advanced by that by the coastal advisory commission so Nancy did such a good job there. I think it kind of went south when she left. Well, that and COVID. And, and yeah, we had a, well, COVID didn't help, that's for sure. Yeah. But, um, and, and we don't have to fill all this tonight, but if uh, if someone else would like to do that, um, it'd be great. They're running at it. We'll, well think about it, Frank. We'll think about it. Move okay. On. Is frails? Is that like an official member or there's not an official committee, right? What's that? But, so, Jen, but Jen, are you still good doing that? Well, we both Frank and Jen kind of do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think we'll, I'm happy yeah, to they, keep up. So it's really well, just. Well, they can control by. that. We're going to drag everybody into that. So it's, that, that will no. not be a, <laughs> that will not be done alone. Um, but, well, let's just think right. about those other two committees for now, then. All right. And if you um, want additional information, I can pass on additional information. Okay. About anything you want. All right. Um, CPC. Um, Penny already said she'd like to keep it, but if somebody else really <laughs> wants to fight me for it. Dear Lord, no. <laughs> I enjoy that. I like spending money that's not mine. Wow. <laughs> you can have it. I'm just going to argue with that, I guess. <sighs> Doug, you seem a little contemplative there. Um, Why, do you want CPC, Doug? No, not me. Okay. <laughs> not it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. No, I'll keep it going for a while anyways, I think. Anybody want to nominate Penny for CPC? I nominate Penny for CPC. Thank you, sir. A oh, second. Second, Andy. Thanks, Andy. All in favor? Um, Jen? I, yes. Penny? Yes. Brendan? We have no problem. <laughs> yes. We know. And Frank, yes. Okay. Um, someone to make fun of. We've, uh, we've Andy's been, um, been working with the farming crew, and I never responded to his email this weekend, not from neglect, just <laughs> didn't get a chance to read through it. And I don't blame you that all of a sudden the end of the summer's here, and there's more to do than there was at the start. Um, but I, I'm hoping that Andy would continue to work as a liaison with the community farming. If you're yes. willing to do that, um, that's a big load. I don't. Do we need a 
Do we need to nom actually do a nomination for those, Amy? Or I was going to say, is, that an act is there a committee that is? Uh, it, I think it's like the trails, as long as we're 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 all willing to share some responsibilities, but. Um, well, yeah, to be the person in the know that can kind of like fill the rest of us in yep. on what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think Andy's, Andy's full into it, so. Okay. I don't think, I don't think we. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think we have to vote some of these just so that folks know uh, between farming trails um, yeah. or projects that. We continue on. So let's give some thought to, to coastal and waterways. Um, no, waterways. Andy said he wants to stay, Frank. He did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion for Andy to stay on waterways. Let's get him while he's warm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Second that. Second that. Lots of seconds. Uh, I don't even think we have to vote it. Talk to talk. Uh, all in favor, Doug? Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, Andy, you want to vote for yourself there? Sure. Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay, sure. thank you. Why not? I think Brendan, I think Jen already voted. Yeah, yes. <laughs> thank you. All right. Frank, yes. Um, okay. Anything else, Penny? Um, not that I want to discuss in public. I think we're close to go into executive session. This right. So can turn us off. There's the language to, to read to go into executive session. Yeah. And I don't know. Oh, we I have, have to close this meeting first. So should I make a motion to close? Well, to I thought wait, 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 wait. I think we have to, to make the motion to go into it. Um, yeah, I think you go by in. roll call. I'm just yeah. telling you what Seth said that I we have to close first. Yeah, but I think. Penny, I'm okay. pretty sure that actually what we have to do yeah, is go, I believe, yeah. go into executive session mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. just so people know we're going to reopen, yeah. but only to close. There will be no okay. other discussion um, other than to close the meeting. And um, just, just one other quick thing. We've got two Boy Scouts looking for Eagle badges and we're going to hopefully divvy up some of the work between the completing the signage and no parking signs and um, base lane signs and street signs, driftway park signs and all that sort of stuff Wonderful. Um, between a couple of these um, young men that are willing to to tackle that so yeah we have the signs we just got to get them get them up so i want to earn a badge i'll come help okay um so I am going to take a roll call vote that we go into executive session. At that time, the um, uh, um, recorded part of this meeting and, and audio video will blend. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to, to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing um, real estate uh, issues uh, with, let me get the verbiage right here. Purchase, exchange, lease of value of real estate property on Border Street. I'll second it. Really? Yes. All in, all in favor? <laughs> uh, Doug? Yes. Uh, Jen? Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Great. Thank you. So who, who's, uh, Jen's going to, first we're going to get things cut up. Who's, um, do, 